this week on Pep Talk. Wouldn't it be wonderful to kind of marry up food poverty and potential food waste? Like marry those up and see if there's a way that we can make that work. It was all a bit of a blur because it was like surfing a wave that was getting bigger and bigger and bigger and I've got no idea how to surf. <sighs> when you look at the pressure that middle-aged men are under at the moment, and you see some of the stats with regards to mental health and things, I, I just don't want anyone to ever feel that there's any stigma attached to asking for help. Don't think that the situation that you're in at the moment is your situation forever. Know that there is a way. So I do genuinely believe that. But I think you saying that, if people are able listening now to say that, then they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Our mission is to help 10 million people start and grow a business for free. We want nothing from you. In Pep Talk, we interview industry-leading experts from around the world who share actionable know-how and life lessons. That's why we're excited to partner with GoDaddy to power up Pep Talk. I've been using GoDaddy for years and would promote them on this podcast even if they didn't sponsor us. You can use their free website builder and start your online business at no cost and even get help these days with naming your business. For 40% off GoDaddy tools, click the link in the podcast notes below and use the code GDXPEPTALK. Hayley, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'd love to start off by you perhaps telling the audience a little bit about yourself. So my name is Hayley Steer and I'm a mum of two. And I started Free My Meal at the beginning of lockdown, August 2020. And we are currently a non-profit charitable organisation. And we help those in need find a meal. Well, today um, we're going to be talking about, I guess, work-life balance partly and how people manage to, people like yourselves manage to do this passion and purposeful projects with no money uh, <laughs> and manage to build up something with huge impact as you have done. There'll be a lot Thank of people you. listening that want to do the same. So we want to learn from you today. And I think we'll start off by maybe telling us a little bit about how Free Your Meal began. How did, how did it start? The, um, the very first thought was uh, basically the beginning of lockdown, we would have um, chats, me and my family, and we'd be on, uh, you know, the video call and everyone would kind of call in at six o'clock and I'd always be cooking. And there I was one night, I'd put the phone up and I was cooking away, I was cooking chili. And there's a ongoing kind of long running joke in my family that I make too much chili. But it stems back from when I was a single parent 14 years ago and it was cheap and it was nutritious. And my kid basically ate it. He's, he's 18 now, but he, he basically ate it like three or four times a week. Anyway, so I'm cooking this chili up and I'm having the, the usual six o'clock check in chat with my family, making sure my brothers and their wives are all good, all the nieces, nephews, my mum and that, my stepdad. And, and you know, we're just, we're just talking as we were. I'm stirring the pot and my little niece and I are like having a chat. And I just suddenly thought, hang on a sec. What on earth would I have done in this situation if I was still a single parent? How on earth would I be coping now if I was in that situation? Well, hang on a minute. There's loads of people in that situation now. And I'm looking at the chili and I'm thinking, wouldn't it be amazing if anyone could get chili? So I'm talking to my little niece about it and she's laughing at me. And I was like, yeah, let's do this. Let's call it Chili Spot. You can just look at a map and it can be a chili spot and you can get chili because it's so cheap. Everyone can make chili. <laughs> Everyone's laughing at me. And um, my niece says, Auntie Haley, hold up. There's a problem with that. Like, not everyone likes chili. <laughs> Who doesn't like, like chili? You're right. Come on. But she said, she said that and I thought, she's right. She's onto something there. Not everyone does. But actually, wouldn't it be wonderful if, you know, your surplus meals or the, the meals that, that you make, say you've got some surplus, wouldn't it be wonderful if you could just go, well, there is a portion of chili. There is a portion of lasagna. There is a, por like, a spare roast dinner. Give it to someone in need. Wouldn't it be wonderful to kind of marry up potential food poverty and potential food waste? Like marry those up and see if there's a way that we can make that work. And that night I started free my meal. That was it. It started. And I think that night I, I had about, in my mind, I thought would help maybe 50 people in my immediate area. And I think within two days, I think there was about, I think it's about 500. I, 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 it was all a bit of a blur because it was like surfing a tide that was uh, surfing a wave that was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I've got no idea how to surf. It was, it, it was that feeling and it just grew and grew and grew and grew. And now we're at, you know, I think 28, 
thousand members across all of our 70 geographically arranged groups. But that's just the people on the Facebook groups. We have hundreds of people signing up via the website and that grows daily on on the way here. You know, I can see people joining. Um, so it's just gone from a little chat with my niece about chili. Ha ha ha. Auntie Haley makes so much chili all the time. Um, to what it is now, which I think is just mind blowing. <laughs> so how does it work exactly? People who are listening, for example, that want to be a part of this movement, what, what what's the structure? Well, let's say you are a cook. We, we refer to people as cooks and recipients. Okay. You're, let's say you're a cook. You've just made loads of, let's use chili. And you realize I've made far too much here. I can, I'm going to, I feel like, you know, I'm going to give this surplus to someone that needs it. You can go to our Facebook group, our main Facebook group, or one of, as I say, um, one of the geographically arranged ones, which you can find on our website. There's a meal map on there and you can join up and you can post that meal on there. You put the first part of your postcode on there, never your full address, never your full postcode. And then a recipient will see that and they'll DM you or some recipients will comment on the post in the same way that um, you might see something that's for sale on Facebook, for example, you'll comment and then you'll get in touch to arrange that um, delivery or collection. The groups are private. Everybody on those groups has to agree to a specific set of rules. We are so incredibly strict. I feel like safeguarding is super important. So everybody is, you know, entitled to their privacy on those groups. Um, but the other side of the token is if you're a recipient, let's say, and, you know, there is so much talk right now about eating or heating. There is so much food poverty going on at the moment. And it's, it's absolutely rife, I think. And it's actually happening to people that you might not necessarily think that it's it would be happening to. Let's say you're a recipient, you can go on that group, you can use the spyglass tool to, to um, search for your area. And you can see those people that have offered food, you can get in touch with those, or you can use the meal map, see where food's been offered, or you can message us directly. Or both cooks and recipients can do all of that at our website as well. So I hope that explains it. I know that it's a bit of a it sounds like a bit of a clunky process, but because we have to use free technology or, or make use of the cheapest technology, that's what we've, this is the way that we've had to do it. So I think it's a great lesson actually for people listening, because sometimes we think, oh, I'm going to, I've got an idea. I've got to build an app. Oh and, yeah. And sometimes, you know, <laughs> when you're building yeah. something, let's say that's free to people, yeah. you're trying to actually literally create something that doesn't have cost for people. You've got to think of inventive ways to build things that don't yes. cost a hundred thousand pounds plus to build an app. So by leveraging existing tools out there like yeah. groups, that's pretty smart. I mean, I why reinvent the wheel? Exactly. And if they provide value to uh, the people that you're trying to serve, then and, and that's fine, isn't it? So I think people listening get it. And I think the people listening have also got a lesson right there. You know, you can just sometimes start by building a group and go from there, right? I'm sure one day there'll be an app. But um, yes, step, by step, so. step by step, step by step. So you had this idea. I love the story um, with the whole chili uh, concept. <laughs> and, but then, you know, a lot of people listening might be saying, right, it, it's great. You do the groups. I can see, you know, how that works. But how are you funding this? You know, how are you able to actually do all of this and, 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 and survive? Great question. Um, I have a very understanding husband um, and an incredibly supportive family. I have four girls that work alongside me every day who have full-time jobs, who are just incredible. They do so much. It's, it sometimes feels like I throw the mud at the wall and they make it stick. Um, but I also do lots of other jobs as well. Um, I work as a teaching assistant, a music teacher. Um, I DJ. I have lots of income streams that I have to carry on with. And sometimes it does feel like I'm spinning a lot of plates but I know full well that I can't stop doing that. I know that I have to contribute to our household bills. You know, I can't just expect my husband to just take it all on the chin. And whilst he's incredibly supportive, you know, we have to put food on the table. We have to pay our bills. Energy bills are going to soar <laughs> at the end of the year. You know, it's going to go crazy. So I'm incredibly conscious that I need to continue with that as well. However, I'd say that this takes up the majority of my time. 
um, I'll be sat on my lunch break at school and I'll be constantly doing free my meal stuff. I call it free my mealing. Um, and the girls, as I say, they all work around their different jobs. One of them's a carer, so she does like night shift. So she'll sometimes do a, a bulk of admin during the day for free my meal. We're just incredibly lucky that these people, um, Vicky, Kath and Maz have basically taken it, taken it on as a second job because they just believe in the project. So but listening, and again, I, I just think my listeners will feel the same. It's like, how do you find the time to be a mother of two? I mean, one, <laughs> one, one of your children's 18, the other is four, well, I believe. Yeah. So, you know, how do you balance, you know, balance all of that out? I mean, it, it's, it, it, we're try, I'm trying to understand something. I'm sure the audience is too. What is there? I mean, it sounds like you, for example, ironically, you're, you're not eating lunch. <laughs> you know, in an ironic twist, um, that that's one way to save time. You work through your lunchtime. Yeah, I um, I definitely am struggling with spinning the plates, but I, I won't stop, and I'm very stubborn, and I will, I will, um, I won't ever give up. I think being a single parent to my kid when you know he was really little, I think you when you've gone through that experience and you realize you just have to carry on, doesn't matter how many times you get knocked down, doesn't matter how many times you're told no, you know, I, I, um, I'm incredibly, um, I suppose pig headed really. I just won't stop. And, and I know that that doesn't work for everybody and there's no doubt, you know, I'm not, I'm not sugarcoating it. I'm not saying it. Oh, look, you know, just work really hard and it'll be great for you. And there are times when I'm sat, in my bed at night, still doing free my meal stuff on my phone. And my husband will just take my hand and go, it's time to sleep now, Hayley. You just have to sleep. You just have to switch off. Um, but I'm, I, I do switch off obviously when I'm asleep, but my first thought is right. Free my meal. Let's check all the groups in the morning before I go to work. Let's make sure that I've done everything I've needed to do, answered all the emails I've needed to answer. Um, the only Real struggle is when either I get sick or a member of my family gets sick that I need to take care of. That is when everything has to stop. You know, that's the only thing that kind of stops me in my tracks. But mm. apart from that, you know, I'll be cooking and, and looking at free my meal stuff. I'll be, I don't really watch much TV. Um, yeah, I just kind of shoehorn it in, but I'm not making it sound like it's easy because I have genuinely struggled with it. I just want to take a moment to thank Taylor Brands for sponsoring this podcast. Have you ever been told you can easily start a business that will make money while you sleep only to realize it takes a ton of work to get a business started? Taylor Brands makes starting a business easy. With its AI powered platform, you can get your business a logo, social media designs, printed merchandise, and so much more all in just a few clicks. That's why I love Taylor Brands. Whatever your idea is, you can make it look legit in a day and actually start selling through the Taylor Brands platform. For 40% off your first order, check out the links in the podcast notes below and use the code PEP. Now, let's get back to the podcast. You know what the thing that strikes me listening to you, and I, I don't know who, people listening now if they're on Spotify or Apple or they're actually watching you on YouTube, you have the most amount of energy of anyone <laughs> I ever met. <laughs> See, see, but, but what I'm saying there, what I, what I think is interesting about this is that people listening might be saying, wow, that, you know, that takes a lot of energy to oh. do all that. But what I'm noticing is that it probably feeds you energy, doing all that you're doing, helping those those 70,000 people, doing doing That's what cool. you're doing, almost like gives you the, the energy you need to push yeah. through. Because when people are listening, it must be like, wow, how are you being a mother, a partner, yeah. working all those different jobs, running this organization and, and and people aren't looking at youtube they won't see you've got a lot of energy which sounds like you shouldn't but it's, <laughs> i feel like the passion and the purpose of what you're doing you're is right. feeding you yeah i think you're right and i think when you get that um i've never really thought about that actually but it's it's interesting to consider when you realize you've made one iota of difference in in a stranger's world your life's it feels complete and to be able to do that over and over and over again constantly, maybe you're right. Maybe that's like, um, that is what is making me so mo motivated. I think you're right. I've never considered that before. Before, like I said, it was just being on a surfboard, just learning to surf as I'm surfing and the tides, the, the, the waves getting bigger. And I'm thinking, I've just got to stand up and carry on. But actually, you're right. It's the actual project is 
fueling me somehow to continue growing it. The other thing is you're on that wave already. So if you don't <laughs> learn to surf, if you don't hold yeah. the line, then you crash and burn. So you're holding the line and making what you learn to surf. On yeah, because you've got on no the choice. fly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I and again, I've got to keep relating it back to my experience as a single parent. It would have been very easy to have become a victim and to have said, you know, the world's against me. This is not fair. I haven't got enough money. I can't pay my bills. I mean, I was three and a half, three and a half months behind with my rent. I had bailiffs at my door. I remember talking to a bailiff through my window and just going, I can't let you in. You know, I can't, I've seen on the TV. If I let you in, you can come and take my stuff. And I haven't, I didn't even have a TV, you know? And I remember those days and I just think, you know, you, you can get through that and get up every day for your kid and carry on. Then who am I not to be able to, to carry it on for you guys who need this service, you know? So you're right. I've never really considered that, but I think it definitely stems from having that experience for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The other thing it gives you is, um, they, you know, the, the pain of going through that yourself, you can relate to the people you're trying to help. For sure. There's the relatability. There's a lot of talk about that in the news at the moment, I know. And um, I feel like who, if, if this is my personal opinion, but how can you know or have empathy with someone's situation unless you have lived it? And I, I read um, lots of things about people's polites and their, you know, different, different passions and projects that they've put in place. But unless I've been in that situation, how, how can I understand that you're choosing between heating your home, feeding your kid and feeding you, paying your rent, paying the bills that the bailiffs are knocking on the door for, if I've not had those experiences myself you can't imagine having to make those choices if you've never been through That's it grim. So, and, and, um, it's grim it is grim <laughs> but it's amazing that there's someone like yourself trying to solve oh. at least one part of that which actually is the most important oh, well you're not you're not going to hopefully <laughs> not have any food to eat I, I wanted to just i know this is quite personal but i wanted to understand a little bit about you know the home life dynamics you've, you know you've got yeah. a four-year-old yeah. <laughs> i've got a four-year-old so i know how demanding a four-year-old oh, can be are. and frankly sometimes quite manipulative too <laughs> and they make us feel guilty for working and so but yeah, um tough. do you think that um, they're seeing you work it, you know your 18 year old for example it must uh, also educate them in a way what's important in life i mean do you feel that or do they make you feel guilty because you're not there how does it play no out? not at all like i've worked since i was 13 i had a paper round at 13 and i've never ever been unemployed I've continually worked, whether I was self-employed, whether I was, you know, a checkout at Iceland or whether I was, you know, running my own business. I have never, I've always worked. And I think my son has grown up watching me, watching me do that. And really knowing that there's no other choice, you know, I'm proud to work. I, I will never rest on my, um, what's the word? Laws. Forget that, it's the rest in your laws. And I think that that's definitely, definitely helped him. Although I don't want to take credit for his amazing achievements, but I think what his life could have been, and I think the paths that he could have chosen, you know, he's 18, they're, ex they're exposed to an awful lot of different paths, different lifestyles. Um, and, you know, I'm not a particularly strict parent. You'll laugh at that. but I can see him commenting down below. Yeah, already. like, That's whatever, not mom, true. whatever. <laughs> um, but I think that he's, you know, I'm so proud. He's just got some offers to university. He's doing his A-levels. He's... He's achieved so much in his life and I just couldn't be more proud. And I, and I would love to think, and you know, his dad, where credit is due, his dad works really hard. And I think that he's probably seen that there's, there's no other option. The world's not going to give you a living. You know, you've got to go and make that yourself. Nobody is going to pluck you from obscurity and go, oh, here you go. Here's, here's a million pounds. You go and live your lovely life. It's just it's not going to happen. So I, I would like to think that there's, a little bit of influence there. Um, but I would yeah. argue, by the way, it's not even good if that happened. <laughs> yeah. We've given, been given money. That's lottery winners Silver never spoons. end up happy, do they? Never, so it's, um, never. I'm sure this would be a lottery winner listening right now. So I'm actually, <laughs> actually quite happy, thank you. On my cruise. <laughs> but yeah. But, Funny, uh, I was talking to my mum about that the other day, actually. Like, what would we do? And I was like, I don't, would you still be happy? I don't know. I mean, yeah, it would be great to have the mortgage paid. But actually, I wouldn't stop doing what I'm doing. Well, that, that also teaching. is a very good lesson this, for the so. listeners that, yeah. you know, if, if someone came along and gave you uh, a million pounds a day, would you still do what you're doing? And yeah. I think oh, you, categorically. Oh, but I think you, you saying that, if people are able listening now to say that, then they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. You're if right. If you would instantly right. change everything about your day and everything about your life, you probably can change it anyway. You probably should. 
So yeah, you're, you're, right. you're living proof of that. You've kind of you've taken an idea, you've made it happen, and now you feel this purpose. And of course, a million pounds into the business, I'm sure you know wouldn't, sure. wouldn't, wouldn't hurt. But at the end of the day, it would, you wouldn't do something different. I think that's a really important lesson. And, yeah. I think, and the conclusion I wanted to just uh, see if see if you agree with this because we're talking about work life balance. I want people to pick up on this. It's like yeah. there is no uh, separation between work and life if you're doing what you love. I think you're right there, and um, you know my <laughs> my my daughter sees this logo, and she knows exactly what it is. Oh, you're helping people with the food, mummy. And you're like you're four years old. You're grasping that. It's just wonderful, and I love that she gets. That she, I mean, all right, at four years old, she can't help, even though she thinks she can cook and she thinks she can do everything. But I'm really pleased with the the values that she's going to grow up with. Hopefully, seeing this grow, she'll know that actually it's important to do what you can to help. It, it doesn't matter if you start an initiative or if you offer some food or it doesn't matter how small or how large it is. If there's something that you can do to help today, just do it. Even if it's just being kind to the person sat on the checkout, you know, just do what you can do. That's incredibly important that my kids know that lesson. Mm. I hope they do. <laughs> the, other, the other thing I take from what you're saying, and there's some of a four-year-old myself, is that a lot of people might be listening thinking, well, I've got kids. I can't go do something I love. I've got yeah, to, I've got to feed that. them. And that makes, you know, that makes sense. But yeah. I would argue that there is a counterbalance that children can actually pick up on whether or not their parents are happy. And, yeah. and maybe if they have one less toy, um, they're actually happy if their parents are happy. Agreed. So and I and again I feel like I'm getting that energy from you. Um, maybe I should have your kids on an interview and check this. But my, <laughs> my feeling is that they they are happy that their mum's happy. Yeah, and see sure. that you're doing something purposeful, which also teaches them an important lesson. It's not just about take; it's about give. Right? I think so. So I think that um, yeah, I think that's really interesting. And, and so yeah, I don't know what your feelings are. I, well, I'd like to think that that's the case for sure. I'd yeah, I mean, feel free. My my son would love to be interviewed by you. I'm sure. Uh, well, comment below. Let us know what you think, kids. <laughs> Um, but I, I think sometimes people do use their kids as excuses for not doing things. I agree. There's, I think, do you know what, though? I think when my mindset when I was, and I, I keep doing, you know, going back to when I was a single parent with B, I think that it would have been so easy. It would have been so easy to have fallen into a very safe, um, everybody can look after me environment. And I never was like that. And, I, and I've spoken about this before. I didn't use food banks I didn't ask for help and I and I should have done but it would have been easy to have just stayed where I was you know um I don't mean geographically I mean mindset wise but I always knew and I think that probably comes from my upbringing actually thinking about it now my mum's always worked my mum worked incredibly hard she's never been out of work I've had that role model in my life and I think that that definitely helped me realize the same things I'm helping, I'm hoping that my children have realised that it's important you contribute, you you become a contributing member of society, you do what you can do, whether, as I say, it is giving some food on an initiative like Free My Meal or whether it's just being kind or whether it's just doing really well at your job or, you know, I do understand, you know, mental health plays a massive part in that if you feel as a single parent or, you know, someone that's in need, I get that sometimes it's not as easy to go, well, actually, what I want to do is um, start a business um, or whatever it is. I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but whatever it is, I get that. But I think that, you know, if especially maybe if, even if you're listening to this podcast, know that there is a way. Know that your passions don't just stop because you're in that situation financially or mentally. Your passions are like there forever. They're not going to, it's like water. It always finds a way through no matter how if you try and stop it, it's still there you know so I do genuinely believe that oh it sounds really cheesy to say but if that's what you're thinking about every day then there will be some way to achieve it and I I don't take it lightly I'm not saying it's going to be an easy path but don't think that the situation that you're in at the moment is your situation forever because if you met me when I was a single parent you'd have taken one look or spoken to me and, and probably you know I'm a very different person but I always had the sort of passion and to succeed and to carry on. And, and I knew my life eventually would be different. How? I don't know. <laughs> I think there's another, another, so many important points you're making there, but I think passion can almost give you the energy to go and be happy. 
and that's a very broad term, be happy, isn't it? Yeah. But somehow if you have that northern star that is bigger yeah. than yourself, then yeah. you don't wallow in your own yeah, uh, well, pain. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you almost see that actually you've got it good. If you're actually eating today, anyone listening oh, right now, sure. if you're actually able to eat today, you're pretty lucky. Yeah, you are. Because you know, there are a lot of people that can't, right? So so I think that just remembering that and being being grateful for that, but having that purpose and passion, I think. You're so right. And I, and, I, and I can relate to it. So, I mean, I also want to just say, I think you said something just a moment ago that really resonates too, which is you didn't want to ask. You didn't, you didn't go to the food bank. I actually think the strongest people ask for help. I actually think I've, I've been in a similar situation where I'm weak by not asking. I'm, I'm embarrassed to it's ask. It's shameful. And, and so actually there's something really amazing in people that are able to put up their hand and say, actually, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind that food today if that's okay. You know? I wouldn't believe the, the, the people that are contacting us. It's um, not necessarily uh, the people you might assume it is people. Uh, in fact, on the way here, I was talking to a friend and we're getting a lot of middle-aged dads contacting us and just saying, look, I've got to hold it together. Um, I'm the main provider. You know, I've got my, uh, I've got a house, I've got a job, I've got a car, but we're cash poor at the moment and I just need to put some food on the table this week. Yeah. And that is from, from all the different demographics of people that I would have assumed would need free my meal that probably would have been the last sort of demographic demographic of person that i would have thought would need it however when you look at the pressure that middle-aged men are under at the moment and you see some of the stats with regards to mental health and things i totally understand it if you need that help there's no judgment here i understand it i get it and um, I just don't want anyone to ever feel that there's any stigma attached to asking for help. We had a mother who was feeding her kids um, <clears throat> bread and, and, you know, bread is still food. It's, it's something on the table. But she said they've eaten bread for three days. Can I use your service? And we're like, of course you can use the service. There's people, you know, that are willing to help you in your area. She's like, yeah, but I, I drive like a nice car and I don't want anyone thinking that, I'm mean, like, hang on a second, you can't just sell your car like that it doesn't work like that. Like it's okay. Use the service, get your kids fed tonight, mm. get a decent meal to them tonight. Mm. And you know, because you're, you're, you're touching another point here, which sometimes people get into debt and get into structures <sighs> Absolutely. that might on the surface look like they've got money, but they can't <laughs> feed themselves. And I, and I blame the debt system and the credit system. And so there's all sorts of things that's like an, that. That's another podcast. That another I'm podcast. with you on that. Yeah. But Hayley, um, <laughs> thank you. Mm. doing what you're doing thank you for coming thank and sharing you. your your story and your knowledge and i feel motivated oh, and, thank and you. grateful and i'm sure my audience will too thank you so much thanks for listening to pep talk we hope you enjoyed it don't forget to follow the purposeful project on all our social media channels where we're giving away even more free business secrets and entrepreneurial value again we'd like to thank our sponsor godaddy for powering this podcast from naming a business to buying a domain name to building your website for free, GoDaddy has you covered. For 40% off GoDaddy tools, click the link in the podcast note below and use the code GDXPEPTALK. See you next time, entrepreneurs. And remember, you're not alone.